Alien Breed is a rarity in today's PC game market. It's cheap, doesn't take up too much space on your hard drive, and is fun to play, something which can't be said about too many of the games found on today's budget rack. If you have about $15, VGA, and 2.2 megs free on your hard drive, you're ready to do business. A sound card and joystick are recommended, but you can get by without them. Once you leave the safety of your starting position, the aliens that have overrun the space station don't waste any time in seeking you out. While not smart, the aliens are infinite in number and move about with alarming speed. Unfortunately, if two or more aliens find their way onto the screen, the game slows down noticeably. The effect doesn't ruin the game, but it is a minor point of irritation. As you explore each level, you will find objects to collect that will help you survive the onslaught of ugly critters that stand between you and success. Large numbers of keys will allow you to open doors and gain access to high security areas. Ammo clips are lifesavers, since in this game you can quickly find yourself defenseless with an empty gun. First aid kits prolong your life by patching the holes the aliens chew in your puny hide. Money can also be found and used at a later point. Your mission on the first level of the game is simply to reach the deck lift that will take you to the next level. To do this, you will need to visit most every area on the level to collect enough keys, cash, and ammo to ensure your safety. The game allows you to teleport to the level of your choice with passcodes given after each level is completed. But continuing in this way won't save the possessions you acquire. And depending on where you left off, this can make the game very hard to complete if more than one sitting is required. Once you've blown all four power domes, the destruct sequence for the level is triggered. You now have to make your way back to the deck lift and escape to level three before things go boom. The red emergency lighting isn't the best navigational beacon in the world, and you'll find that aliens can get right up in your face before you even notice them. The feel of this sequence is much like the race to the escape pod in the film Alien, and don't those monsters look a little familiar too? Scattered around each level are Intex computer terminals. Logging onto a terminal allows you access to lots of helpful information and services. Radar readouts of the current level and structural information help you identify and deal with the objects you will encounter. These terminals are also where you type in the access codes to start off in a different level. Fortunately, there's one very close to the game starting point. This radar screen, accessible from any Intex terminal, is a necessary tool for navigating the labyrinth levels of Alien Breed. Buying a remote location scanner will give you access to this display from anywhere in the level, although the accuracy of the information degrades as you move farther from the terminals. On some levels, a scanner can make the difference between life and death. Once you get past the first few levels, a new enemy awaits you. These little face huggers are small and extremely speedy, making them a serious threat to your well-being. Don't these seem a little similar to a creature in a certain trilogy of films? Do Ridley Scott or H.R. Geiger know about this? Some levels contain fire doors that must be closed before you progress to the next area. These doors are closed by shooting their control panels located on the wall next to them. Be careful though, for once a fire door is closed, you'll never be able to open it again. This can be an especially big problem in two-player simultaneous games, as teammates can become separated by an errant shot in the vicinity of a fire door. Some levels contain this little device, called a refuge iris. These things are designed for dumping waste into the cold void of space. Needless to say, they don't discriminate between galactic garbage and space marines, so watch your step. These irises are conveniently placed in front of doors you need to get through, and holding aliens at bay while timing a walk across a closed iris is... interesting. In higher levels, you'll be confronted with a new kind of alien. These are much faster than their relatives and are a little smarter about loitering in front of your gun barrel. They tend to move diagonally towards you, making them harder to kill. With a number of these guys closing in on you from different sides, things can get claustrophobic pretty quickly. It's common in Alien Breed to find laser doors like this one. Laser doors only allow you to move through them in one direction, although the aliens don't seem to have a problem with going against the flow. These doors can be really annoying when you run from one end of the level to the other just to have your progress halted by a laser door that won't allow you to pass. Remember how handy I said these remote scanners were? I had fun playing Alien Breed. It's definitely not an in-depth gaming experience, but sometimes the best way to relax is to blow something to pieces. The industry doesn't have many decent budget-priced games, and it's nice to find one once in a while. You won't have to wait around an hour while the game installs to your hard drive, and you won't have to spend all afternoon reading a poorly written manual. What you will get is a large amount of play value for the dollar. So if you like to shoot at things, give Alien Breed a